In this video, we'll learn how to install a Zabbix server on a RHEL 8 machine. As you can see on the left hand side, there are steps written along with the commands in order to complete the installation. And on the right hand side, I have got a fresh RHEL 8 machine. So let's go ahead and run these commands to complete our Zabbix server installation. First, what we need to do, we need to set SLinux in permissive mode by running set and force zero. You can quickly check the status of SLinux by get and force command. As you can see, it's permissive. Next, what we need to do is we need to install a Vim editor. This is completely optional. However, it makes our file editing easier. Now we will install the Apache web server. Once the Apache web server service is installed, we'll enable and start it using this command. Our step one is complete and we have installed the Apache web server on our machine. We'll go ahead and clear the screen and move to step two. This step includes creating a database. We'll be using a MariaDB database server. We can check the version of the MariaDB database installed with this command and it's 10.3.28. We'll go ahead and enable and start the MariaDB database service with this command. And then we'll go ahead and configure our database. So currently we do not have any root password for the database. So we'll hit enter and we'll hit yes in order to create the password. And we'll create the password as Zabbix or anything as for your liking. You can remove the anonymous users. You can disallow remote login to your database and you can remove test databases and you can reload the privileges on this MariaDB database server. Having done that, we need to log into the DB console with the password which we just created. I created as Zabbix. And then we need to create the database using these commands. And I'm giving the password as well as Zabbix. As you can see, identified by Zabbix. So my Zabbix database will have a password Zabbix. I will flush the privileges and quit out of my database console. Our step two is complete and we will go ahead and clear the screen once again. We'll move on to step two wherein we will run this command in order to download the Zabbix related packages. And we'll run this command to install the Zabbix related services. And we'll run this command to upload the database which we downloaded from the official Zabbix website onto the database which we created. And we'll enter the password for that database, which was Zabbix as we created. Once the step is complete, we'll go ahead and clear the screen and move to step four. We'll go ahead and configure the Zabbix server conf file. We'll enter the details which we created on the above steps. So DB name would be Zabbix, DB user would be Zabbix, and DB password will also be 
Salix. We'll press escape here and then press colon and then type in WQ, write and quit to come out of the Vim editor. Then we'll edit the PHP configuration file. And we'll go to the bottom and edit this this way and update our region. You can update it as per your region. It has to be in a specific format. For the format, you can check out this link. And we'll write and quit again and come out of this editor and we'll go ahead and start the services which we just edited and then we'll enable all those services as well so that once the rel 8 machine reboots all the services are up Now we need to configure the PHP file for our Zabbix frontend. So we need to update these six or seven parameters, memory limit, upload, max file size, according to the values written next to them, or we can manually search them by pressing slash here and searching for memory underscore limit, which is already 128. We'll press escape and then we'll search for upload max file size. And we'll press enter and I to insert and date it as 8M and we'll press escape and then we'll search again with slash then we'll search for post max size then we'll update this as 16 search max execution time and we'll update it as 300 and we'll update max input time as well as 300 And the final one, max underscore input underscore bars. As you can see, it's grayed out, which means it's currently as a comment. So we'll make it colorful and bring it out of the comment section and update it as 10,000. And we'll press escape finally and press colon and then write and quit this file. Once this step is done, we'll go ahead and restart the PHP and HTTPD Apache service. There you go. We did not receive any errors. Now we will go ahead and log into our console. In order to log into our Zabbix console, we need to have the server IP and then type in this in our browser. So I'll get the IP here of our server with this command. I'll copy this and open a browser. then type in slash Zabbix in front of it 
and press enter. As you can see, the Zabbix has been installed and we'll click next here. As you can see, all the PHP parameters are okay. And then we'll click next. We'll enter our database password once again here, which was Zabbix. And then we'll give a name to our Zabbix server. We'll call it Zabbix server. It will just give us a confirmation. And then finally, it'll give us a congratulations message and we can click on finish. And it'll take us to the login screen. We need to type in admin here. Please note the admin A should be in uppercase specifically and the password is Zabbix. And as you can see, the server is up and running and it's a fresh Zabbix server. You can go ahead and update the admin password by going on to administration and users and then clicking on admin and update your password from here. Thanks for watching.